Welcome back. The future may hold many opportunities, but if South Africa doesn't move along with the times, we may be left behind. How we teach the next generation the tools, skills and technology to equip the young with a global quality education. Lumka Tsiki from Chikulula Social Investment joins me now to discuss this further and tells us about the recent cracking the code webinar. Uh, thank you for joining us, Lumka, at ENCA. And I read, of course, um, in some of the information that we've been gathering that if SA doesn't prioritize coding, it will be around 100 years behind. Do tell me more on this, please. Absolutely. Um, and I think even when we think about it now, the world as we know it, the world as you and I know it, is changing and it's changing rapidly. Um, and I think technology is a big contributor to the direction um, that we're headed. And so if we don't take our children along on the journey, like you're saying, you know, it'll take many years um, for our learners to be able to catch up. The skills and the jobs that are in demand today are very different um, from the skills and the jobs that will be in demand 10 years from now. Um, and so it's, it, it becomes important now more than ever uh, to be able to capacitate our learners um, and to be able to upskill them, essentially future-proofing our learners um, to be able to thrive in a future that is unknown. Um, and coding and robotics, I think, is critical in terms of the skills that learners get um, from these subjects to be able to take them on that journey. Mm, do tell me more about the 21st century learning and the future of work and how it will look. So it's quite interesting, right? Because um, there are surveys that are done on jobs that are in demand or jobs that were in demand 10 years ago, jobs that are in demand today and the jobs that will be in demand you know, in the future. And when you think about the jobs that will be in demand in the future, coding, robotics, artificial intelligence, all become central um, to the jobs that we will look at in the future. And I think more than anything, it's not so much the subjects themselves, but rather the skills. And what we're wanting to impart on students today is the ability to think quite critically, um, the ability to be creative, skills that can be adapted into any context, um, into any job. Um, and it's quite interesting when they say that the jobs that um, will exist in the future are not even, you know, um, in creation today. And so they, there are so many other things and it, and it really is about the skills that we will impart on these learners. The ability to solve problems um, is a critical part of coding and robotics. And I think the thinking quite systematically and being innovative um, are the types of skills that will be necessary to be able to adapt in any context in the future. Um, and so I don't think it's necessarily, I mean, obviously the subjects are important, um, but it's more the value in getting the skill out of those subjects um, that will be critical for the future and making sure that we're future-proofing um, our learners for you know, an unknown um, reality and the context that we, we can't even fathom right now. Mm, I want to talk about the reality that you mentioned. Bring it back home. How realistic is it to have robotics and coding in the South African school setup where my colleague, for example, in the Eastern Cape, the brilliant Nabant Langaniso, has covered schools that are in buses, some under trees, for example. Then we're talking now coding and robotics in the school setup of South Africa. Yeah. So I think it's a, it's a critical question, right? And the one element of it is being able to make sure that skills are equipped to be able to teach the subject. But I think even more glaring for me, and something that I, I actually want to add as a caveat to this discussion, is that from international assessments, we know that education in South Africa has very glaring gaps. Um, so the recent terms you know, shows us that 78% of our grade four learners cannot read for meaning. Um, that is a very scary stat. And if we look, and that's just on, on the literacy, and if we look at the numeracy, we also know that 63% of our grade five learners can't do basic sums and they can't subtract. Um, and so this becomes something that the government needs to be able to capacitate themselves to solve in tandem. It is important to future-proof our learners for a tomorrow that is unknown. But at the same time, it is also critically important to make sure that we are addressing today's issues today. And that is to get le learners literate and to get them numerate. Um, so I think that's the one part of it. And then the other part of it, I think, is also, like you mentioned, you know, um, being able to make sure that the skills of the schools, rather, are well equipped to be able to, to, to get this. Um, and the South African, this is quite interesting because the South African education inequality is probably more in 
equal, unequal than the inequality in the country. Um, and so, so this is something that really needs to be taken into consideration um, because what we don't want is for the Quintel 1, 2, 3 schools to be left behind and the 4s and 5s to thrive, you know, um, further exacerbating this divide that we have. Mm, and you mentioning the glaring gaps and it, it just makes me wonder how we're faring then uh, in the rest of the continent. It makes me even think of the metric pass rate, the pass mark, I think it's about 33%. How are we then faring when it comes to coding um, compared to the rest of Africa? Um, so I think when it comes to coding specifically, um, I am not certain, but I do know that when we look at the international assessments, because at the moment we don't actually have um, assessments that show how we fare as a country in terms of coding and robotics. We've always prided ourselves and the government in wanting our government to be proactive. And, that's, and so I think this is a good thing because the government has been proactive in this policy. Um, but I think, like I said earlier, it is critical that we address the current issues in tandem um, with kind of thinking about the future. When it comes to, you know, literacy and numeracy, when we think of the continent, South Africa was the last of the 50 countries that were assessed. Um, we actually performed the worst and we performed the worst behind um, Morocco and, and Egypt. And so, you know, it, it shows you the gaps that exist in our education system and those, you know, also need to be addressed while we were considering how we look at coding and how we think about um, capacitating learners to think quite differently when it comes to um, uh, robotics as well. And just lastly then, Lomka, what are some of the social issues we could solve by embracing this new age of learning? You know, I think when we think about how unequal we are as a country, um, that's definitely one of the issues that can be addressed by capacitating um, learners to be able to take on. Um, and, and, and also, you know, quite interestingly, when in the, in the webinar, the one thing that came out was the unemployment rate um, and how we could tackle unemployment through, you know, teaching the skills, the critical skills, um, teaching these to unemployed youth. And so that is one of the other avenues that we really can, can um, make a difference. And I think education in general, um, our education, like you said, the matric pass rate, you know, is, is quite low. Um, but this gives us an opportunity. And I think this is one of the things where we can look at problems, but we can also look at them, you know, as, as potential opportunities. And this does provide us with an opportunity to be able to apply very, I mean, programming, just like mathematics, is very abstract. It's an abstract subject. Um, and so this does afford us the opportunity to kind of in tandem solve those solutions together while upskilling the learners through programming, you know, you're solving um, for maths concepts um, and understanding. And so I do think that those three things are probably the most critical things that we can try to address in the immediate term through the rollout and a successful rollout of coding and robotics.